There's a lot of people right now looking for the best stocks and shares ices because we're heading into a new tax year. Well, I'm sorry to say the best stocks and share ice just doesn't exist. But give me a few minutes, and I'll explain what I mean because different people need different things from their ices. What might be good for me might not be best for you. So in this video, I'll break down some of the main considerations when picking the best ice for you, and then I'll tell you which providers I think are worth shortlisting this year. I'll also tell you which ISA provider I've chosen for the 22-23 tax year. Now disclaimers, none of the providers that I'm going to mention are paying me for a plug. They're not even aware that I'm making this video about their products. I'm also not affiliated to them in any way, shape or form other than um, at least a couple of them I might have some funds with. Um, I will link to their websites just in case you want to check them out, but that's up to you. Now what follows isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. And even if I was, I don't know your personal situation. So if you do need help with stocks, with shares, with investing, um, then seek out a suitably qualified professional. So let's all get on the same page regarding stocks and shares ISAs because they're really quite simple to understand. They're basically just a standard stocks and shares account or platform, but your funds are held within a tax-free wrapper. So no matter how big your pot grows, your gains are not subject to capital gains tax. Now, if you've been investing for your entire lifetime and you've made, let's say, £1 million, look at you, then you can imagine how powerful this can be because when you come to release that cash, let's say during your retirement, then on the one hand, you'll pay zero tax, um, assuming, of course, that that was all held within an ISA. On the other hand, you'll be exposed to capital gains in excess of you know £100,000, close to £200,000 even. So the only real difference is the type of account you chose to initially deposit your money into. Now, I've oversimplified that example to make the point, but the key takeaway is that if you can use a stocks and shares ISA, then you probably should when making your investments because you'll be exposed to the upside of the market, but you'll avoid the downside of tax. Okay, so what are these considerations that I'm talking about? First question, are you an active or a passive investor? Now, if you're active, you'll be managing your own portfolio, uh, probably on a regular basis and making lots of trades, certainly when you compare to a passive investor. You'll be doing lots of research, hopefully, otherwise you, you're basically just gambling, and you'll essentially be buying individual company stocks. So in short, you're trying to beat the market, you know, Warren Buffett style, hopefully. Um, if that sounds like you, congratulations, you are an active investor. If you're a passive investor, then you're trying to track the market. You'll be making fewer purchases and you'll probably favour exchange traded funds, ETFs, over individual stocks. Although if you're like me, you'll probably hold one or two um, singular companies as well. Emphasis on the hold, I'm definitely not a trader. Now, if that sounds like you, well done. Welcome to the world of relatively stress-free passive investing. Now, the second consideration, if you're getting any value, value out of this video, then a thumbs up would be much appreciated. And if you want to see more from me, then a subscription would be amazing. All right, seriously, second consideration. If you've got a large ISA pot, let's say anything over £50,000, then um, you need to watch out for platforms that appear cheap on the surface. Let's say, for example, they don't charge you for a trading fee every time you buy and sell something, but they'll charge you for a, an account fee. And if that's percentage-based, it could be quite dangerous. So, for example, Vanguard charge an account fee of 0.15% per annum, and on a £50,000 um, you know, account, that's £75 per year. Now, this is more than some other platform providers who charge a flat monthly fee uh, regardless of the size of your pot. So the takeaway here is that you need to watch out for account fees because they can really ramp up as your investment grows. Although, to be fair, they, they generally are capped at some degree. So again, to use the Vanguard example, they charge that 0.15% up to an account value of £250,000. So the charge caps at £375 per year. Now the third consideration is what are you planning to buy? Is it just funds, ETFs, UK stocks, American stocks, stocks in emerging markets, small caps, etc. You know, the list goes on and on. 
Now this is important because not all stocks and shares ISAs are equal. Think of them like uh, sweet shops. Some may specialize in international chocolate bars, others only sell boxes of chocolates, and some may only sell lollipops. Uh, I don't know why I chose sweet shops. It was probably a stupid comparison, but you know, let's roll with it. So you can spend 20,000 pounds per year in one of those sweet shops, but if they don't sell Kit Kats and that's your favorite chocolate bar, then it's probably not the best place for you to put your money for you to shop. So, uh, so look around. Now take some time to consider the first point when you're doing this, which is are you an active or a passive investor? If you're active, you're probably gonna to wanna to purchase individual stocks. Very likely you're gonna to wanna to do that internationally so you can buy the likes of Tesla or Alibaba. Uh, and therefore you'll need a stocks and shares ISA provider that allows you to do that within their platform. Back to the Vanguard example, that's something that you just can't do with them. Finally, fees. Now, um, it should come without saying that fees can really eat into your gains, and there's a range of ways that providers structure their products to extract money from you. Uh, the main ones being the account fee, that could be flat, you know, a, a flat fee per month as an example, or percentage-based, foreign exchange fee, uh, platform fee, you know, fees on the market spread, which is a sometimes a tricky one for people to understand. So this is when, for example, let's say take, take Tesla stock, that might be trading for $994 per share, um, but when you come to buy it within your provider's account, it might be that you get a quote for $995 for the same share, and the provider will pocket the $1 difference. Now that's just an example, it's not quite how it, how it works, um, but you know, it's something to bear in mind, because again, if you're trading a lot, those kind of things can ramp up. Now, as I said, it should come without saying, but you know, providers still charge these fees, in some or even all of those areas. So um, with competition rapidly growing, um, there's, there's lots of options out there. You can certainly reduce, if not eradicate, some of those fees um, completely. So it's always best to do your research. Okay, so you've got an idea of what you're looking for. For me, I'm more of a passive uh, investor with, a, with an eye on keeping my fees low because I'm not gonna be trading all that often in reality. So I'm not looking for the bells and whistles and therefore I don't pay for them when, I, when I'm taking out these services. Right, so back to the considerations and, and which providers I, I might uh, suggest you should shortlist. So active or passive. If you're active, as I mentioned before, you're gonna want a provider that's gonna offer you the flexibility and the range of investments available um, on the platform. Otherwise, you're gonna feel restricted when you find opportunities during your research that you just can't purchase and you can't put them into the items that you've chosen, which would be you know, disastrous. So in my opinion, the best options here are either interactive brokers or free trade. Free trade's got a very easy to use platform. It's got a growing number of stocks and ETFs to choose from. Um, however, they do charge a foreign exchange fee and it's, um, it's, it's more than the, than the market rate, to be honest. They're quite, um, quite expensive on the foreign exchange fee. To get access to the full range of investments, you're also gonna to need to pay for a plus account. If you do that, then the ISA account fee is waived, which is currently three pounds per month, but it's something to consider. Interactive Brokers comes out cheaper, um, but the, the charging structure is complicated, overly so, in my opinion. Um, I, I tried, I couldn't actually explain how the, how the fees are gonna work in the space of a minute uh, when trying to make this video, so uh, in the end, uh, you just Take my word for it, I've crunched the numbers. Trust me, it comes out cheaper than a free trade account across a range of common scenarios when you're buying and selling stocks and you, you, you've got a mix of some American stocks in, the, in there as well. Now, the user experience on uh, Interactive Brokers isn't quite as refined as free trade, um, so it's probably more uh, suited for the seasoned investor who is happy to kind of dig through the menus and, and you know look for what they're trying to, to achieve rather than the, the free trade account platform which is you know you, you can pick it up not even knowing how to buy or sell a stock and it's very straightforward. Now honorable mention here for trading 212 based on what they say because I, I couldn't test the account I've not been able to uh, open an account with trading 212 from an ISA perspective because they have shut it for new uh, customers. Um, so I'll have to take their, their word for it. 
If you use a Trading 212 account, you know, is what they say accurate? Is the account as good as they claim it is? Uh, if it is, you know, leave us a comment down below in the uh, comments. Just, just bang my elbow. Now, if you're a passive investor, then Invest Engine might be more your speed. They don't offer individual stocks, um, at least not right now, at least. And they specialize in ETFs, those exchange traded, traded funds that we mentioned before. Now, they don't charge a fee for placing trades, nor do they have an ISA fee. However, they do make money on the market spread. And whilst they'll say it's only 0.07% on average per annum, it's not very transparent. And it'll depend on how often uh, you trade and the value, you know, the size of those trades. Now, a close second, in my opinion, is free trade. The downside here is that um, there's an ISA fee um, and also not all investments are available, as I said before. You need to pay for the Plus account, which is £9.99 per month if you want access to their full range. Now, depending on what you're looking for, Vanguard gets an honourable mention because they not only, well, they only offer their investments, their, their own, you know, their own products, but a number of their ETFs are so popular that it might not be the end of the world and it could be exactly what you're looking for. Um, their platform is quite dated though, so don't expect anything as modern uh, looking as the likes of Free Trade or Invest Engine. Um, they, they also have a, a percentage-based account fee, as I said before. So even if you want to invest in VUSA, as an example, which is a popular Vanguard ETF, there could be cheaper ways to do it via an alternative platform who simply offers the same product, um, but with a, a lower fee structure. Okay, next consideration, how big is your pot? Now, um, the usual suspects are gonna pop up here because once you've made your initial um, decision on whether you're an active or a passive investor, then the other considerations kind of fall in line with that main decision. That being said, if you've got a large pot, you really need to think long and hard about investing with companies that carry a percentage-based account fee for all of the reasons I've said before. Um, the question you need to ask yourself is, can I tick all of the boxes that I need to as part of my investment strategy and yet uh, invest with someone who doesn't have such high account fees? And there's lots of options out there now, so it should be relatively easy to find what you're looking for as once you've made that decision. So to make things super simple, if you wanted to invest £50,000 into VUSA, which is a popular um, Vanguard ETF looking at the S&P 500, you can do that with free trade and avoid paying the £75 account fee that Vanguard would charge um, for that exact same investment. Now, to keep things fair, you do need to factor in the £36 per annum uh, fee that free trade would charge for their ISA account, which is £3 per month. Um, but the point still stands. You need to consider not only the investment that you want to make, but also the associated fees and whether you can make that exact same trade with a cheaper provider. If you invest in smaller amounts, this isn't such a key consideration, but it's something to bear in mind because as your account grows, hopefully over time, then uh, the charges will start to ramp up. So I personally you know, start as a mean to go on. So don't rush into setting up any stocks and shares ISAs until you spend some time to think about what you're planning to buy. Because once you've made those initial deposits, you're stuck with that ISA for the remainder of the tax year. Now to be clear, you can have multiple ISA accounts open in the same tax year, and you can freely, de freely deposit into them as you see fit, but you can only deposit cash into one in any given tax year. So you don't want to limit your options by investing with Invest Engine, for example, um, only to find that during the tax year, you actually decide that you want to invest in Tesla or Amazon or indeed anything that isn't within their ETF range on their platform. So this is an area that changes constantly. You will need to keep doing your research and based on the investments that you want to make, um, make sure that that's in line with the companies that you're, you're looking at. Based on who we've talked about today, Interactive brokers are probably the most flexible with the widest array of investing options. Free trade are not completely out of the run. They've got over 6,000 stocks in their platform with nearly 300 ETFs. Uh, most are available within the ISA, but around a third, you will need to pay for a, a plus account if you want to trade them. And finally, last but not least, and we've already talk, talked about this, um, for completeness, you need to consider fees because they can really eat into your 
your profits over time. Now, always look for the best like for like deal, as I've said, and think about the example from earlier. Of can you buy the exact same thing, but do it cheaper with someone else? And if you can, then maybe you should. Now, clearly there's gonna be, um, I guess, some leeway if, you, if there's a level of uniqueness about a particular provider. For example, Vanguard will only um, hold certain ETFs and products within their, their platform. You, you can't invest in them with other providers. Now, if that's the case and that's something that you're interested in, you need to consider the value of that particular investment when compared to the additional fees that you're gonna be charged. And it may stack up and therefore it might be the right thing for you to do to, to invest and pay the extra with that particular provider. Um, or it could be that you just like using the, the platform or the app and if that encourages you to keep investing, then great, you know, it's, it might be worth paying a small fee, uh, emphasis on the small, <laughs> bang my elbow again. We need to be pragmatic um, when, uh, when trying to be successful investors. So there it is. That's how I'd approach decision-making when it comes to stocks and shares ISAs and which one to fund uh, in the coming tax year. Now, depending on what's important to me, the ISA that I choose may look different to the ISA that you choose. Um, but, you know, using those principles, you should be able to decide what's best for you. Now, as promised, what have I decided to do this tax year? Well, I've already got an ISA with free trade um, for this, this tax year that we're in right now. And based on my relatively passive investment style, where I hold you know, a few individual companies, but mainly ETFs, that works for me. And the three pound per month isn't terrible in terms of the, the, the platform fee or the, the account fee. However, for the common tax year, I'm planning to open up an account, ISA account with Invest Engine, because my intention is that for the next, um, you know, a tax allowance, ISA allowance, I'm going to put that into ETFs. And it's the cheapest way I can find to do it right now. If I do want to buy some individual company stocks, I'll just use funds that's already in my free trade account because I'm sitting on a little bit of cash within the ISA. Now, I hope this video was useful and I hope it helps you choose the right stocks and shares ISA for you. If it was, then give it a like. Please consider subscribing if it's something that uh, you might want to see some more of or you know these types of videos and uh, my ugly mug. Um, but also let me know what stocks and shares ISAs that you've, you're, you're going to choose to, to open this, this year or even what you've already opened. Do you disagree with my suggestions? Now before I go, remember tax isn't the only thing you need to protect your investments from right now. Inflation is kicking in. Um, the government is struggling to bring it under control and the threat to your wealth is real. To learn more, check out this video. Um, I'll talk through within that video I guess some of the ways that you can hopefully avoid the painful impacts that the inflation squeeze can bring um, and ultimately help you protect your wealth. So until next time, peace.